I'm Johnny Spade, the new Ohio Valley Heavyweight Champion with the pretty new belt around my waist. Hi, I'm OVW official Josh Ashcraft. Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at Triple Threat Talk. I'm Dean Hill. This is Ricky Chevy, and I'm the Blue Collar Millionaire. I'm Mr. Peck. God, that's great every time. Spectacular. We're the Bronis Brothers. I am the One Go Revolution, Taylor Hendricks. This is Brandon Espinosa. I'm the Assassin. I'm Bruno Raul Limana. I'm James Moose Thomas. I'm Shiloh Jones. My name is Ron Head. I'm the announcer for OVW. I'm Jamin Oli Benzia. I'm Alex Silva. I'm Rocco Bellagio. I'm Kerry Bodie, the Ohio Valley Wrestling Fan Advocate. Drop me all Constantine. I'm Ranch Red. My name is Muhammad Ali. I am. I'm Paradise. This is Jack Black. This is Ohio Valley Wrestling referee Chris Sharp. This is Sexy Sean Casey. I'm Chris Silvio. This is Michael Hayes. This is Jason Wayne. And I'm just going to tell you right now to make sure you listen to Triple Threat Talk. Boop, boop. Ah! Talk fans, welcome to episode 62. How do you like the new digs? The new outfit? No, 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 no. Come on. No. And I had a couple and people. And we had a couple no. people ask uh, what I'd look like after I got my cowboy hat. What I'd look like uh, as the DWA version of the Doctor. So there you go. Why? Why do we continue to do this? Why? I don't know. Oh, whatever. I don't mean, act. Don't yeah. act like you're not impressed, and don't think that you don't have some sort of repercussion for that little stunt that you pulled last week. Hey, Postmaster. Yeah. Oh, hi. I just died in your arms tonight. Hey, who am I? It's cool. But who am I? You did a good job. It, you did. It was a good job. It was unfortunately a technical error, though, because it was really supposed to be you serenading Cody with, um, uh, with Celine Dion. Uh, and I, uh, and my heart yeah. will By Whitney Houston. No, no. Okay. You can't you can't degrade Whitney Houston. So anywho. But anyways. Enough of bashing uh Big B. Let's get <laughs> well, on. Well when's your G. bashing me again? Well you started it. You know, no, nobody I didn't tell you to cut that promo. <laughs> you did. I did not. I'm not oh, saying I did not off air. No, oh, no, no, no. I didn't tell you off. to cut that promo. Uh-huh. I said, and I quote No, no, I I I I, I said if you wanted to pay the doc back, you should do it. And I also said that if you didn't do it, he mad. would be more mad at you for not doing That's it. true story. Because he would Stole say you area. wouldn't have the grapefruits if you didn't do it. I did it, and you encouraged it. So All right. Anyway, so, let's start it up. We've spent two start minutes. Start it up. Light it up. Wow. Light it up. Light it up. Light it up. From the DJ Becca show. Did any of you think that this show would go this far, as in this many episodes? I kind of did. I kind of thought it might. What are you doing? We're in the middle of user questions and you're stuffing your face. Skittles. This is not an eating contest. You're, you're not Marshawn Lynch. Skittles. Put, Skittles. put your Skittles down and answer the question. Beast mode. I, I kind of thought that it would go this far just because, you know, we, we were going to do it no matter what. So, I mean... Well... We have come a long way. I mean, yeah. from T Cubed or Triple Threat Wrestling to now a JR wannabe over here in the middle. Mm. So it, we we have come a long, long way. But I'd sure. say, as far as uh, did anything that would go this far, um, actually I didn't because I figured down the line we would get tired of it and just move, move on to something else. But I'm surprised we were at episode 62. Which is pretty amazing to say itself. So it means we're officially qualified for the senior citizens menu at wherever. True story. <laughs> this is like thirty percent off. Hey, and we go to ten percent off at uh, Senior Day at Kroger now. Epic. That's, that's like hell on earth. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> <have to> go <laughs> there. I, if you want to live, don't. I, I, know, I know. I know. If you want to see what the rapture's going to look like, head to Kroger. On From the C A W interviewer. What do you think was the biggest person that was a face to ever turn heel? I think all together, one, two. 
three. Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Come, on. Come on. Definitely. Come on. The biggest heel to turn face. That's a tough one. I said before the show, Randy Orton. I agree. I said him. because Sorry. that the only reason I said it, I was referring to the storyline where he was with Triple H and he. It talked to a man family, uh, punted McMahon, RKO Stephanie, kissed Stephanie. He was like a big heel. Then he was a face kind of some after, time after that. So it's tougher to, to answer this question regarding heels to faces because when someone's a heel, they don't really gradually go to a face. They just they just leave and they come back as a face kind of thing. They don't like like faces go to heels, but heels don't really go to faces as often as they usually do. I would think it would be Shawn Michaels. He was never a heel though. Yeah, he, there were definitely when he was feuding with uh, Hitman, all the stuff he did to Brett. Yeah, I know everything but, but that, he, that like he did. Sean, and, and people, people like Sean, but sometimes they didn't really like what he did. And when yeah. DX first started, I'm gonna say Triple H too. Yeah, H. Tri you can throw a Triple H. He was, H in he there. was yeah. well yeah. hated. Yeah, yeah. They they were both won all those hated. championships, yeah, sure. and then they formed DX. And, I guess, you know, yeah. 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 I would say it's definitely probably those. Who would be the next big heel to turn face? We've said it before. I've said it before, at least. I'm Wade Barrett. No. Um, yeah, I agree with him. I mean, he, I mean, it's just one of those things when someone... Obviously, Wade Barrett was a heel uh, before he left. He was, you know, leader of the Nexus. And then kind of went on his own after the group broke apart. Um, and then when someone... He, well, Wade Barrett's a pretty popular wrestler, obviously. Uh, leader of, the, obviously, the big faction of Nexus. And when someone's gone for a long time and he's very popular, when they come back, people are starting to like 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 him and you know cheer for him. So obviously, I would think he's going to be a face when he comes back because he's going to be a popular guy. People want to see come back. So. I agree, Wade Barrett. And finally, from uh, the CAW interview, the biggest face to turn heel, John Cena. Not that, <laughs> that will never happen. I actually don't know because it seems like on this case that they're seeming content with who they've got facing and healing and yeah, I don't know. All I mean, that. I guess I could just maybe say Dolph Ziggler. Maybe he'll go heal. I, I mean, not he he a face. Heal. That's right. Never mind. Um, now he wants a face to go heal, not a heel to go heal. I honestly don't know the answer to this question. The way that they're going, it looks like it might be some time before <laughs> any, any, any face face goes heal. You never know. Could be Sheamus. He's already, see, you know. he is punk though. I mean, he's out interacting with the fans. Punk again is another doing a, it's yeah, a clobbering yeah, time thing. Yeah. Punk is another like rock slash stone cold where they tried to make him heal, but they still had they, a, they, they yeah. failed miserably. They failed miserably. So, from against all odds, twenty. Do you think Christian will be in the Hall of Fame when he retires? Ah. Uh. I'm talking this one. I, per, personal bias aside, okay? Yeah. Just looking at his resume as far as titles won, length of career, stuff he's done, I'd say yes. And it has nothing, because he has the uh, WWE record for most tag team titles with uh, Edge, okay. obviously. He's won the Intercontinental Championship. He's won the World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, so he's, he's won the Triple Crown in wrestling. Not a lot of people can say they do that. Uh, so I say yes. So he's yes, only no. won the WCW belt, not the Spinny, but he's not a Triple Crown winner. Uh, yeah, they, yes. no, they're not. He, they put all the Triple Crown winners up. He's not on the list. Well, they he should be, but uh, Te because of a technicality, yeah, they say he's not. But um, technically, he is. I think based. I don't think based on anything he's done in the last couple of years. Right. I put him in the Hall of Fame when he did with Edge. That's it. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't put him in the Hall of Fame for any single thing he ever did. I wouldn't either. I because, mean, because all his success, you know, credit to Edge, but all his success was being in that team with Edge, and he should definitely go in the Hall of Fame I, for that reason. And don't get me wrong, I like Christian. I like Christian, I, I like him, but I just don't think he's had a Hall of Fame career. On his own with Edge, though, yeah. But Top not, five not. worst factions ever made. Golly. Spirit Squad. Spirit Squad would be up there. Uh, uh, the new Nexus. Yeah. Yeah, I'd because say Because, number one. You know what, the Spirit Squad? They, they didn't. Nikki! Mikey! The, uh, Johnny! Mitch. Who was that? Kenny! Who was that group that they had the Army guys, uh, the Jackal, and Kurt? Oh, and, the, the Oddities! Yeah. No, 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 the Oddities is in there too, but uh, what the. I don't remember. The Resistance, yeah. not the Resistance. I didn't even talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh, yeah! Yeah, they had Get the Sniper boy. Recon and Kurgan. The and Oddities. The, the Oddities are up there. The Spirit Squad. Um, One faction I think people like, but I actually, I actually did care for them. They were actually pretty interesting. Was right to censor. 
Oh yes, right. Yeah. Just yeah. Eh, eh, eh. Owen Hart. No, Stephen Richards. Stephen Richards. The Good I Father. He, I thought he was in that. And the Good Father. Yes, Owen Hart was in the Right to Censor. Are you sure? Yes, I'm almost positive. That's not right. Mm-hmm. That's what they did after he passed. I don't think so. I think he was in that. But yeah, I mean, um, those are definitely some of the worst the B, ones. The BWO. Mm. The L. The, definitely DX. No. no. Yeah, right. yeah, right. Nexus. From Richard Kenobi. Uh, what are your least favorite NFL draft picks? Ugh. I don't know. Wow. I haven't really delved that far into the draft. <laughs> no, I Alex Smith, maybe, for me? Um, uh, no, he's, he's working out so far. Uh, Did he mean current this year? Does he mean current? Or? I guess. I, I don't know. I don't, maybe overall. I don't know. Maybe like from this season? Current is tougher because I don't know the people that are actually pay attention to him. <laughs> and they're good. Um, I'd, I'd tell you... One of the least things I liked that happened in the draft was Kellen Moore going on draft. Yeah, everybody, everybody knows that. Didn't like that. Uh, we're very yeah, pro. Yeah. Ke- uh, at least I'm very pro I Kellen didn't Moore. Like I didn't like that. Um, I, I did not like the position Tom Brady got drafted in. Well, looking, I, looking back on it, yeah. Well, I mean, even then, he was he was a, a not a very highly. Right, but right. He certainly people certainly thought he was going to go in the third, third, right, or fourth right. round. Well, for sure. I mean, according to I remember way back when they were talking about the combine. Like, he didn't have a good vertical jump. He didn't have a good. He didn't have a good, have a good forty. So. It, but see, that's the thing. He had the arm, he had the height, right. and he always had the distance. Yeah. It's one of the things that, you know, maybe he wasn't as physical, physically fit right. as they would have right. liked him to yeah. be. But I know I, or at the time I remember people saying at worst he was going to go fourth round and right. he went to sixth. So. Uh, and, you know, I think looking back on it, it's actually a good thing for Brady to go that deep because – it, it gives a chance to other people that are like if the draft is so late in the draft, it's like well Tom Brady was drafted so late. Look, look what he did, you know. And he was almost Mr. Irrelevant, like yeah, pretty yeah. close to yeah. it. If it wasn't for uh, the Jets taking out Drew Bledsoe, don't when he would have started. Um, for me, I, I might say this year I did like the pick. I just didn't think it was going to happen so soon. It was Bruce Irvin for the Seahawks uh, linebacker? I did like him. He's playing pretty good. I'll get into more of that when we talk about preseason. Um, but I was kind of surprised. It was a very surprising pick by everybody. They thought they would take maybe. Uh, linemen, because they need they need a better all line to protect Marshawn Lynch and uh, Matt Flynn. So I, I mean, it wasn't a bad pick. I just was confused by it. So befuddled, befuddled. You're befuddled. Yeah. befuddled. Originally, I thought the Redskins were making a bad move for trading up, and, <laughs> so, it, and it, it's not because of who they were trying to get. Robert Griffin, the felt so bad for the Browns, right? But I didn't understand if you're the Cleveland Browns, why would you do that? I, don't know. I mean, you could have Robert Griffin on your team right now. And you decide to trade down and let the Dude, like, the, the, the thing that I posed a question to you about that, and if you're a Browns fan, I apologize, but it's like, do they even care? Apparently, well, apparently, obviously, there's going to be some new blood in there, well, like we talked about right. last week with the new owner. Right, but uh, the thing I'm saying but, is they have an opportunity. But they had a wonderful right. opportunity. They have an opportunity to draft the Heisman Trophy winner in right. college football. And the Redskins, so, obviously, the Redskins, so surprised the Redskins have a lot of money. Right. And they throw the money to Cleveland, they say, you know, we'll take the money, we'll take the draft picks. Well, you could have had a franchise quarterback, which they've never had in their whole career. They have a franchise running back in Jim Brown, but have they ever had a quarterback that a franchise well, quarterback? Well, Dan, Tim Couch. They drafted him as But a, he hasn't done anything with Dan, well, 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 I want to see playoff wins. That's what I'm talking about. And we all know Dan Snyder's not afraid to spend money. No, he's not. He's got a big checkbook. Ooh. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Uh, also, as a side note, uh, Richard Kenobi says that. We should have a T-shirt made for me and you, with Big B on the front and Cody Rhodes on the back. Now wait a minute. First of all, I don't want to attract the rodents or the insects in my house. So therefore, <laughs> the, the fact that I would own that shirt, I would buy it, have it made, and stick it under my house to keep out the bugs and the pests. I, I, Thanks, I Dick. That statement. <laughs> Thanks, Dick Konami. I, I like that statement. From the Buck in Five. John Cena. When DWA ends at the end of the year, what will you miss most? <laughs> Get him off of me, man. Oh, my God. Uh, what I miss most? Probably the community. Um, so I know a lot of people enjoyed the show. I know he enjoyed writing for it. But uh, as they say, it's time to move on to newer things. Yeah, I, um, I mean, I'll miss you know commentating. I'll miss throw, throwing everybody for a loop. And yeah, it was it was good to do the commentary thing. Yeah, obviously, I want to do something like that. You know, and, uh, I mean, it, I like working with you, Frank. Mommy. If you're watching, give me a jump. Okay. I I just say missing commentating because I've had 
fun. Well, that's doing, that's the only well thing I mean, but doing the few things I've done, I've enjoyed doing it. It's been exciting for me. So, right. so. who are your favorite villains of all time? I like, like I said before, I like the Riddler from Batman. I like Jafar from Aladdin. Uh, I, like, I like, I like a lot of them. I like Captain Hook. Uh, Cogswell Cobb. Doctor Doom. Uh, the Joker. A lot of Batman people. Yeah, you, you gotta say the Joker. I'm big on the demigods, though. I like Apocalypse and Dark Side. Duh. Uh, uh, I like, uh... Uh, the Scarecrow. I was about to say Riddler, but I like, I'm a big Scarecrow fan. Thanos. Uh, I like, uh... I like the people that are strong and kind of, uh... Kind of all in the, like, all in the right. thing. Because yeah. it's always interesting to see how people try to beat them. Right, yeah. Um, as far as villains go, I would probably have to go uh, with like villains in certain movies that I've mm-hmm. seen, like The Lord of the Rings, the uh, uh, Smeagol. Smeagol. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, the fire. Yeah, I bet they did. <laughs> and as the Doctor tries to recover from uh, being. Uh, possessed by the Smeagol. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Let him control himself. And we'll be right back. Idiots. <laughs> oh, babe, check this out. Hey, come on. You want a little chippy? You want a Dorito? Are you hungry? Come on, get a Dorito. Babe, don't hurt my dog. Come on, get a chip. Come on, get a chip. Get a chip. Come on. And welcome back here on Triple Threat Talk. I am Postmaster Jones, along with my esteemed co-host, the Big B, and Grimace. I mean the Doctor. <laughs> I want to go back to the last question yes. uh, just for a second because during the break I realized... My favorite villain of all time, I didn't even mention, is Shockwave from the Transformers. Oh, how did you get a Transformer? I did. I did. He's my favorite villain of all time. From Brian Enraged 96. I wonder what he's so enraged about. Maybe being 96. Could be. Hey, but if he lives to be 96, he should be happy. On this question, we're going to break the order. These two are going to answer, then I'm going to answer, because I've actually seen this. Honest opinion, I have no idea, so I won't even answer. Okay. (laughs) I'm just telling the truth. I don't, you know. That's fine. The, the truth shall set you free. That's, That's right. fine. If Superman and Goku, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right, you are, you are. were to fight to the death, who would win? Uh, well, no, I know Superman only has one weakness: is Krypton. That's why I went with Superman, I would guess. Uh, although Goku could do his like level whatever Super, Super, Super Saiyan, Saiyan and just use like a huge bomb and kill him. So I got bombs. So, it's the thing with Superman. It's like like I said, he only has one weakness: is Krypton. Mm-hmm. He's got two. We uh, magic. Right. Well, I'm saying, what if Goku gets Krypton and he's done? So, I don't know. Um, they actually did this a few years ago uh, in a fan fiction in Wizard. Uh, Superman and Goku fought. Basically, Goku got transported to Earth somehow. And Superman, he saw Superman because he's always, you know, looking for a next big challenge. He sensed the strength in Superman. Basically laid him out with a couple punches. Right. But then Superman just went ballistic on him and realized that he was a big threat. And... Then they realized that they were both good guys after they were talking during fighting, and they both went on their merry way. But definitely, Superman was kicking his royal little, you know what? Right. So, from Jeffrey Caster. I'm not gonna beep you like I did last week. And <laughs> that was funny. Though. I'm trying to figure Even out. Even Terry said that was funny. This, uh, Can you tell he's trolling? Huh? Can you tell he's trolling? Okay. This I'll I'll read it since I know that you don't probably get the reference. Why don't you just read it the way it is? Okay, let me read. Okay, it. go ahead. What do you guys say? Who do you guys think will face Cloud, the rock strike, at Royal Rumble? He's trying to say Strife, not Strife. 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 John Jaden Yuki Cena. That's a Yu-Gi-Oh reference. Big Bane Show. I don't know what that is. Bane. Sam Benjamin Tennyson Punk. Ben 10 is a cartoon on Cartoon Network about a guy that's got uh, something called the Omni... The omni Rot or something like what that. What the heck was he doing? I, His knowledge is limitless, isn't it? Well, it's... I, I when he puts this to reference right here, I don't understand why he's putting any of these. I, I get Bane on the big right, show. Yeah. I don't get a John. Uh, I don't the get final. a Yu-Gi-Oh reference with John Cena. John Jeffrey knows everything. I don't get a fa- Final Fantasy reference with The Rock, and I definitely don't get the Ben Ten joke with CM Punk. I, I don't. Maybe I, I, guess I, think, I think he just wanted us to look like idiots. On no, that. I think he is trolling. I, 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 Jeffrey Caster, he watches the show. I talked to him on Facebook. Well, he's he a DWA fan. Yeah, he's a DWA fan. 
I but anyway, think, let's just answer this straightforward. I think it's going to be CM Punk, honestly. I think it's going to be CM Punk as well. They've done John Cena, and now they're going to do CM Punk. Punk. CM Punk all the way. From the Tyrant, one, two, three, two. What is your dream WWE storyline? Half the locker room is one faction versus a divided, a divided, like, you know, some opposing force versus a divided, you know, people fighting back. I think I, awesome. I think I speak for everybody. WWE versus TNA, inv uh, the Invasion Angle Part Two. I mean, we all know how good that was for wrestling. Uh, two. Big yeah, but you knew who was gonna win. Right, I know. But I think if they did it a certain way, where like they did it like behind the scenes, where they they made a deal, they didn't buy them out because WWE bought out WWE. That's why it happened. But if they didn't buy them out, they just struck a deal and they kind of invaded. It'd be kind of interesting to see the way because you know you didn't know. I mean, you know, probably WWE was gonna win anyway. But it'd be kind of cool to see how they would interact and. The invasion thing. Again, that probably won't happen, but... John Cena as a heel. Yeah. Make it happen. I want to see it. From the Son of Sins. AW release from the WWE. Is this about the Kobe thing, or is there something here I'm not getting? And, as a follow-up, should he have been released? Okay, answer your follow-up first, yes. Yes, he should um, have, definitely. He's not getting released for the Kobe Bryant thing. It didn't help his cause, I'll say that right now. But... According to all these sources from AW's uh, publicists and stuff like that, um, the guy's name is Brian Josie, by the way, not Abraham Washington. His name is Brian Josie. And according to what they were saying is that he kept making outlandish comments at live house shows and on social media websites. And, you know, and, and people are speculating that they decided to do some Linda McMahon's campaign because she wanted the Senate seat. But they think if this kind of, you know, big cloud was over them, they, they, she might not get it, so they had to let him go, which is like our hands are tied. So, but... The thing is, he shouldn't have said the things he said. You have to know where you're, you have to know where your head's at. You have to know what company you're in and what the rules are. Now I know it's not the attitude area anymore, and that's 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 what it is. But you got to know where your place is, and you can't say something like that. I think the Kobe, I think if he just did the Kobe Bryant thing, they would have said, "Dude, you can't say that." Okay, we're not gonna fire you, but just don't do it again. But then he kept going and going and going. So it's like, dude, we told you to stop. You're not gonna he stop. Energizer Bunny, he keeps going, going. Thank you. Going. But no, they told him they probably told him to stop. He just didn't do it, so they said, sorry. I disagree completely. I think, um, and that's why we have this show, we can't disagree. I think that uh, Postmaster a couple of years ago, he went to the house show here and said that it was a lot more risque than a, than a not risque, but there was a lot with the Bella Twins, you'd said that there was yes. a little bit more bumping and grinding and yes. you know some things going on. And some of the things that they released him for saying was stuff that he was saying during house shows, which A, aren't televised anyway, right. so no harm, well, I think no it's foul. Just thing kind of hurt. And B, you know, like Chris Jericho said, it's not the Attitude Era anymore, but it sucks because AEW had a purpose there. Right. Yeah, he said some stuff about Kobe, but at the same time, so did Big Show when it first happened. It was relevant, yeah, eight years and ago, nine years ago. It's one of those things that I don't think he should have been released. What this is, is this is now the WWE's paying the price, in a way, for them going public. Right. Going public means now you have to have a board of directors consisted of your stockholders, and somebody, a couple of the people that hold the majority shares here probably did not like his comments because a general, I'm going to make a generalization here. Generally, older people have the money right. and maybe older people uh, have more shares in WWE stock and they did not like the reference. Right. I did yeah. not remember Big Show making a similar yeah, reference. Nine years ago. So but, I, I, that's w exactly what this is all about. Bottom line, you gotta know, you got to know where your head's at. I, I, uh, I think he should have been fired. I mean, me personally. I mean, yeah, I know the house shows are more risque. They, they can get away with a little more at house shows than a TV taping. But again, the officials are but, back there. Yes, that, and I mean, it's the same thing. You're being watched, you're being scrutinized. And, and especially with today, how technology is with Facebook and Twitter, everything goes on the internet. Someone could be at a house show and tweet what he said, and then it's everyone's. Yeah, team, so. exactly, and house show to me is nothing but a glorified practice with people there to see it. I yeah. mean, you're basically seeing, because we saw the same match at the house show a couple weeks ago, oh, Cena yeah. versus Show that was on Raw the next night. And the same exact way. same move set, it went the exact same way because they do that for practice purposes. That's why they have house shows to practice for television. Obviously, they throw some matches in there right. just to have them in there, but right. uh, several of the matches do have a purpose. Right. And, I, and before I announce my viewer of the week, 
I noticed there was a comment this week that somebody yeah, uh, Michael K. Michael somebody K. Michael K. apparently doesn't watch this show close enough. Either that or they're totally out of I don't know what. But Michael Cage The Michael Cage. I do not have a Jeff Gordon crush, okay? I do not like Jeff Gordon. I don't know where you got the fact that I like Jeff Gordon. It is Tony Stewart, <laughs> not Jeff Gordon. If anything, Jeff Gordon, right. if anything, Jeff Gordon has a crush on you. That's right. <laughs> so let's clarify that right now. <laughs> Get that out there. That's, That's right. 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 So this week, it was a tough week. I was scanning through all the questions and comments. And, and queries. And queries. And it, it's got me a little, uh, I'm a little... Uh, befuddled. Befuddled. But I finally settled on a decision. Here we go. This week's Triple Threat Talk Year of the Week has to go to... We'll be announced after the Brett. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have to go to the CAW Interviewer. You are this week's Triple Threat Talk Episode 62 Viewer of the Week. The streak has been broken. Yet again, yet again. So, with that being said... We shall turn it over to the cheesy music. Big B, if you please. And here we go again. Doctor, doctor, give me the news. I got the bad case of the headline blues. Ah, oh, come on. You I'm, not, you. I'm not giving you any more things to work with, mister. Whoa, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> That blind dancing is a staple of this show, and no more Wade Barrett promos are coming out, so you should do it anyway. So I'm gonna roll it again, and let's try this a second time. Roll it! Doctor, doctor, give me the news. I got the bad case of the headline blues. Yes! Yes! <laughs> All right. Right. Really? Really? You made him do that again? How dare you? You should be ashamed of yourself. I'm ashamed of you. You're disgusting. So, sick freak in a preseason game this week, uh, Jason Witten suffered a very serious injury, a yeah. lacerated spleen. Um, He's definitely out the rest of the preseason, and uh, that is a serious, uh, serious injury. According to what I heard today, and I know some people out there are Cowboys fans, my friend Billy's a Cowboys fan, and he's kind of concerned about this. Basically what's happening is he lacerated the spleen in the game against the Reds, which was a pathetic game, by the way. 3 nothing by the Cowboys. Where's your offense? Please. But Preseason. Pre I don't want to hear it. 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 Pre anyway, so season. Quentin lacerated his spleen. It's in it. it's busted in his system. He had some injuries. Um, they're saying if he does not, I repeat, does not need surgery, he can play the game against the opening game. If he does need surgery, I don't know what his timetable is. Pre season. <laughs> Um, just saying. This just in, the Mariners' Felix Hernandez throws a perfect game against Tampa Bay. He becomes the first, Mariners in, first Mariner in history, the third this year, and the 23rd overall to do this awesome feat. Somebody Three. check those baseballs out. There's an awful lot of perfect games being tossed around. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it's what team. happens when you clean up the game. Unfortunately, the team doesn't really have anywhere to go. I so. mean, still. No. Chad Johnson released from the Dolphins for domestic battery charges. Is he done? Uh, I'll say this. He's, he, I was saying something some before. If this incident happened before preseason, during training camp, someone would have picked him up before preseason. But it's already week two in preseason. They already got their stuff set. I say maybe before the trade deadline, someone picks him up, but I don't know. I, they talked to Pete Carroll about bringing you know, Batman and Robin back together with T.O. and Chad. He said he didn't want it. Uh, Skip Bayless said something about maybe the, de the Cowboys or the Jets. Possibly, I don't know. But again, who would want him at this stage right now? The 49ers were floated around there as a name. I heard, I heard the Jets. I heard, uh, I did hear Dallas. Well, the theory is to give him more depth at okay. the wide receiver right. position. But he would never get 85. Well, he Randy would never Moss is not a spring chicken, though. Right. I mean, and also, he's he's and also, good. But the, they are giving him excellent marks, right. by the way, in training camp. And also, he is doing very well. I'll comment on the fact that I didn't care for... How it was done. Yeah, how it was done. Um, if you watch, this, if you have HBO, there's a show called Hard Knocks. It's been on a couple of years. They had the Cowboys on before and the Jets, whatever. Uh, this season they have the Miami Dolphins. And usually when someone gets fired, it should be behind the scenes, you know, in private. But apparently it was shot and filmed on the show. So you see Joe Philbin uh, fire Chad Dustin on the camera, and he has to walk away off shame and shame. And that's not really fair because 
firing should be a private matter. Firing is business. Business should be private. But it was a, it was a spectacle for the world to see. You're forgetting one crucial thing. Mm. This is the television show. I know. And that ratings are their business. Right. So that would boost the ratings because that right. is definitely drama. Right. And who cares if it hurt his feelings or not? He hit his wife. I wife. know. I, I've said it before. I, mean, I don't care. Whoever does that should be thrown in jail for the rest of her life. But I mean, I realize she has a temper. If you ever seen Basketball Wives, yeah, yeah. she has a temper of her own. Right. But that still didn't give him any right or reason to uh, go and headbutt his wife. Now, here's the thing about is he done or not. They, um... Here's what's going to happen. They're, I don't think anyone's really going to have time to pick him up exactly. because Roger Goodell could still get suspended on this. They could still suspend him on this, but they made a very good point today on ESPN. If you're going to start suspending players for this, you're going to have a whole lot of players because, unfortunately, domestic abuse is a problem in right. the NFL. Right. Um, it's no excuse, but they did make that point. But if he's suspended... Uh, then you know, yeah. I, but I don't see him being suspended because this is his first offense. Right. It's horrible. He's not a bad guy. He, he does not have a record of any yeah. kind whatsoever. We do need to clarify that. But at the same time, I don't see him being suspended. But there is that possibility. Right. And we'll be back with the rest of headlines after this. The Fresh Maker. And we are back. What? What's so funny? What's so funny? We're back and you're just sitting there. We're well, sitting. Yeah, I mean, we're, we were in the middle of a discussion, then you're like, okay, we're back. And I'm thinking, did you oh, have we're... something you were It sounded like you were maybe trying to say something. Uh... Well, here's the thing. Did you know that now in the NFL, the touchback line is the four yard line? What? The other day in a preseason game, I think I did see this. An NFL official. Now, granted, they're replacements. They're new. They're, they're, new. they're, they're not, replacements. Not, to not to be confused with the, with the film with the counter. Like Ed Hockley and Gene Santori and all those guys. Right. But the player was standing on the four-yard line. He caught it, and the ref went. Did it stand? Touchback. So obviously the coach challenges the play and it gets overturned and they get the ball, you know, you to use on the twenty. On that. But the fact of the matter that the ref called oh, a touchback on the minute. four wait, yard wait, wait, line. Are scoring plays reviewed automatically now, though? Yes, yes. but it wasn't a scoring play. Sure, a touchback. No, it's not a scoring. Oh, score. Score. I, I, see, I, see, I see what you're thinking. Maybe, 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 maybe he was just waving. waving. You're right. He was just waving. Yeah, he was just waving. Hi, I'm in the game here for. Wow. I heard this and I was like, really? Touchback by, awesome. the, by the offense. Wall spot at the four yard line. What? Awesome. <laughs> God. Uh, Mike Wallace is considering reporting, considering reporting to the Steelers camp this week. My really? question is, really? 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 You didn't get your $250 million and three first round draft picks for the Steelers. Really? I wonder why. Really? Guess what, Mike Wallace? You're good, but you're not worth that. In other news, yeah. Mike Wallace is also trying to report to Common Sense Camp as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, with that going on, um, it's we're going to go to... Uh, ball news, I think. Uh, we, we do? Yeah, yeah, I think he had um, something he wanted to discuss. Did you discuss. want to say something? <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, well, let's we'll start the preseason. Preseason starting. I know you're looking forward to it. I know you are. I know I am. Um, so, I mean, first, first impressions from you. How did the Broncos look? Well, considering that our moronic cable company around here does not have NFL yeah, Network, yeah, right. I couldn't watch it, yeah. so I listened He's to the too. See? I listened to the game, and it was quite awesome to hear Peyton Manning under center. I'm like, ah, but Peyton Manning's playing. And I was quite, I'm sitting here listening to it. Uh, the Broncos played, uh, granted, just like I told you, it's preseason. But they did wallop. Walla. Yeah, that's mine. Walla. The team they played. The Chicago Black Bears. The Chicago Black Bears. Like 34-3, to I think. 31-3. Yeah, that was a wallop. Mm -hmm. uh, they looked good. The defense played very well. Uh, the first string defense for what little time they were in there. Peyton played really well. Uh, he had an interception, but that wasn't his fault. 
Uh, it was in Stokely's hands. It bounced off of hey, Stokely's hey, hands. Stokely. That's right. They're changing that this year, too. That's not going to be an interception on the wide receiver's part now. Really? Well, then, apparently, uh, yet again, the refs must have bungalowed on that one, too, because they credited Peyton with an interception. But it went off of his hands, off his shoulder pad, and the guy for intercepted it. But either here nor there, I thought the Broncos, you know, they yeah. played well. And I'm looking forward to this Saturday yes. when they play your sea chickens, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if you want to read a good blog, uh, check out Postmaster Jones' blog on TripleThreadTalk.com about the sheriff, Peyton Manning being back <laughs> in pads and playing for Denver. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah And yeah. then uh, also um, the 49ers did very well against uh, – Hell, I'm having a blank. Oh, come on. That's your team, man. I know. But it's like T said, it's, it's preseason. Pre it's preseason. I was happy with my team. But I uh, call a little can't... too happy with your no, team. No, I'll tell you why. You Colin... must have posted like 10 things on Facebook. I'm like, really? Colin Kaepernick uh, ran it in from 78 yards out. That's pretty impressive. Uh, there was a 63-yard 63 uh, 63 touchdown from somebody else. Huh. I wonder who that was. Andrew, Andrew Luck, I think. His first pass of his pro career. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Just saying. Hey, everyone was... A dump pass? A, to the, to the, a three-arm three pass. Which makes that more, much more impressive three because he had to deal with traffic on the defensive end. Three-yard pass. And then... And Donald Brown does the rest. And everyone... I'll get to my team in a minute, but everyone is, like, blowing this up. I'm not trying to blow this no, up. No, no, no. I'm not saying I'm you. saying that... I'm not saying you. I'm saying everybody. Okay. Like, they're saying, oh, Andrew Luck is on a bust. And he, and he looks like he's Peyton Manning all over again. Like, dude, he played the Rams. The Rams are terrible. The Rams are god-awful. You can go in there and score two touchdowns throwing the ball. The Rams are terrible. Well, the way he threw the ball last year in the football special, I don't think you could. But uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, if he plays a defense that someone isn't like you, if he puts those arms against the Niners, then he's got something to say. But I mean, yet again, it's preseason. It is preseason. But, I mean, I was just making the comparison that before you guys got all out of hand right, that right. he does look a lot. He, the, Both him and Peyton Manning now have that in common. Right. So, um, so I'll get to my team. I was very pleased uh, with uh, Tennessee. Uh, the Tennessee did play uh, Seattle in Seattle, the home team. Um, first play of the game was an interception return for a touch, which is pretty epic to see. And I know they like to say, that's preseason. It doesn't matter. But your starters do play for a little while, so you get to see how they – this is what I like about preseason. You get to see your starters play for a little bit. You can see how the backups work, whatever. Uh, Lynch didn't play. Thoris Jackson didn't play. So uh, Flynn took a little more of the snaps in the beginning. He was 11 of, I want to say 11 of 13, but only 71 yards. He didn't have a pick, but didn't really phase him because the defense did end up, end up getting it back. I was very, 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 very impressed with Russell Wilson out of Wisconsin. Uh, great numbers, a buck 24 passing, had a rushing touchdown of his own. Uh, pass to Braylon Edwards. Braylon Edwards, welcome to Seattle, buddy. That was a great catch by him. And the funniest thing I saw from that game, was Matt Hasselbeck. Really? Come on. I'm having a conversation. I mean, we talk like two seconds about our teams. Well, I'm talking about... I mean, it's preseason. I'm getting to a conversation now. Okay. Uh, Matt Hasselbeck now plays for the Titans. Right. He's playing for the Seahawks. We know. And during one of the plays, the crowd was getting too ruckus. He's like, I can't take it. I can't take a timeout. So now he knows how it feels. He has, he's never been on that side before. Now he's on the side, so... But um, like you said, I'm sure he already knew how. It well, I'm just saying, he playing there, he no, can he, see, he it. can see what the visiting saying, quarterback has. He's never had to be in. He's position. not bonded. He's never been in the position. Anyway, it's, so it's preseason. It's preseason. So, anyway, preseason. We move to Saturday. Uh, my team plays your team. The yep. Broncos in Denver. Yes. We shall watch it again at the B Dubs because Tom Warner yes, says we'll, we'll, we'll be watching it together. Tom Warner says NFL Network. You don't need that. Come on. Because Tom Warner is watching greedy punks. Yeah. All right, so, so that's don't beat that out. I don't want them to Mom, know. Yeah. Suck. So I did, can't agree with that. So. Did NASCAR go right this week? You can't go right. NASCAR crash into a wall. Sure you can. Apparently you can. Oh. But when it's on a road course, and apparently you can go through the grass, right, left, no, sideways. It didn't go. It was the grandstand. I think yeah. so. Big B, take a look. He's 18 moving around like he might be out of fuel. That's exactly what I was thinking, Andy. I was wondering if he was running out of fuel here. Coming to the white flag. I'll tell you, the two cars close that gap. I don't know if he's that or if he thinks he might have a flat tire or something like that. He's really moving the car around. It doesn't look very stable right now. One lap to go. Kyle Busch, defensive line into turn one. There's something wrong with the 18. Now Ambrose trying to get second from Keslowski while he tries to get the lead from Kyle. Oh, in the S's. It's right. Got it.
dangerous spot on the track for Kyle to be sideways. Looks like he gets off to the guardrail. No caution yet. Here's the race for the lead. Kazasu got damage on the left front. Is the tire going to make it all the way around? And will the nine help him? Oh, Everybody's in the grass. grass. Ding, ding, ding. That might have been the race right there. We'll no. see. No, Keselowski's slower. <laughs> Keselowski's got a problem. Trying to stay with Ambrose. Two final corners. Do they use the bumpers? A nudge, a push. Can Ambrose save it? To the checkered flag. Who gets here first? Clear, clear. Ambrose, nine. Keselowski, two. Final corner. Marcus Ambrose is going to win at Watkins Glen in a remarkable last lap turn of events. Jeff Gordon in the wall. That's off the final corner. A year's worth of excitement in 2.45 miles. Incredible. Wow! The finish. That was a wowzer of a finish. 423 right at the end, too. Yeah, well, no, he did it to himself. It was kind of the oopsie doop. Uh, so Kyle Busch leading, pretty, pretty good. leading on the last lap. Spins out. Uh, Marcus Ambrose, Brad Keselowski, what a duel. I mean, hats off to those guys. They put on a whale of a show. Right. Marcus Ambrose outlasts Keselowski. Uh, Keselowski gets out of the car, and he's like, man, that's racing right there. You know, that's... Robin uh, is racing. Yeah, he's saying, you know, if every week... he That's the most excited I've seen a guy to finish second yeah, right. forever. I mean, you would have thought he won the daggone thing, the way as excited as he was. Uh, and, of course, uh, just like my blog about adding a road course into the chase... Uh, the big question came up after this race. Should they add a road course into the chase for the cup? Mm. And this race, to me, proved it. Yes. Right. I mean, yeah. if they're going to be that exciting, you're going to have such drama-filled ending. Yeah. And, I mean, I know not every race is going to be like that, obviously. It would be great if it could, but it's not. Yeah. Uh, they should do it. Yeah, so. so. And they go on the manufacturer background this week. They go to Michigan, up to Detroit, uh, for uh, the cup series. The Nationwide Series travels across the border. They are going to Canada, Montreal, hey. Cirque Gilles Villeneuve for another road course affair. Hey. So it should be an interesting week in motorsports and NASCAR. So, Doc? Um, the Olympics came to an end. Uh, Big B, throw up the final, the uh, final minute count. Now, I do want to make one. Woohoo! Yes! I didn't throw it up yet. I'm excited. I was gonna make a. I'm excited. I was gonna make an apology last week when we put up the medal count. We did say on the show that Great Britain was in third. At the time, we put up Russia actually took the spot, and Russia actually did finish in third. So here's the standings: USA on top with 104 medals, 17 ahead of China with 87. Yes. And Russia was in third. Yes. So. Yes. Track and field really helped us out because Japan or China doesn't have a whole lot of runners. Yeah. But. Check out my blog on TripleThreadTalk.com or the fan dumb, dumb, dumb hat on. It was awesome. My new hat. I love this thing. But uh, I made a couple of humorous observations and a couple serious ones about more what we learned from the Olympics. They were pretty we funny. We learned squat according to you. Mm -hmm. You know what, though? The uh, basketball team, what a nail-biting that was. Yeah, I, I, That was I, awesome, though. I, I think... No one, and I, if they said they were, they were lying. No one expected that to the game to be that close. No, I did. Are you kidding me? Are you really? Spain's second best team in the world. Well, no saying, one no, said that. No, no, no. I mean, that game was Spain is designed to be close. Uh, uh, uh. I think no one expected it to be as close as it was. No. 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 I definitely expected it really? to be that close. Dude, Spain beat us the last time. Spain's beat us before. They're the second best national team in the world. Well, Spain is well, amazing. The way, the way Didn't was, they have the Gasol brothers? The way USA was playing, I figured it would be a more It easy doesn't game. matter. They I her, definitely expected it to be close They, they weren't hitting her threes. And according to you, you already you gave out the results before the game was even over. He put I was on, watching the bad feed. He put, and I swear. he put on Facebook like the game was still on. I'm like, the game is still left. going in. He's like, USA has gold. I'm like it's not even over yet. And it was funny because the feed I was watching, and I was in Des Moines this last weekend to enjoy the Des Moines State of the Iowa State. Little Jimmy, I see. Little Jimmy. Uh, he was at the St. Yeah. Louis picnic too, mm -hmm. but uh, it was everywhere. But be that as it may, uh, I went there, uh -huh. and 
I was watching it, not aware because NBC Sports had dibs right. on the entire tournament, right. so I didn't even bother turning on NBC. And somebody told me, yeah, it's just, I think it was you actually, just told me it was on NBC, and I was like, oh, okay. But I was watching it on a feed that was choppy, and going into the third and the fourth quarter, it actually said, and I couldn't see anything, right. but the announcer said, and this one's over, belong to the U.S. I don't know who he was announcing right, for, yeah, right. but that's why I put that result okay. up there, because yeah. I didn't know what the heck was going on, and then he told me he was on NBC. Yeah. But anyways, getting to the top two news stories of the day, of the, um, the Nationals, sticking by their commitment to st- sit Steven Strasburg after 160 innings to protect his own interest, all right? He had Tommy John surgery two years ago. What is Tommy John surgery? Tommy John surgery is the name for the L.A. Dodgers pitcher, right. Tommy John. Uh, in 1974, he underwent the very first surgery of this kind, and basically it's to replace the or repair the UCL tendon, which is runs around here, and it's prevalent. It's injuries become when there's a lot of twisting, like in a pitcher or javelin throwers or cheerleaders or whatever. There's a lot of substantial amount of athletes that can get this injury. And basically it happens when the ligament stretches, it has microscopic, uh, microscopic tears or, or larger tears in some cases, and the ligament gets so loose it just cannot hold the arm together. Basically you have that going on. Okay. So they repair it by taking a tendon from another place in the body and replacing the ligament with a tendon which is much more stronger. Now, the problem here was we hadn't really had an adequate test pool, which is why uh, last year he pitched actually 200 innings, and then they went they declined, they went down to 160 this year. I, there was no really real reason uh, for the decline, but they did it to 160, and they're going to stick by him. Right. All right. right. So now that we know what Tommy John surgery is. And we're going to go to break here in one second, but before we do, just so people know where this is going, are the Nationals making the the correct decision here? Because they are three games over, well, four games now, but uh, four games over the Reds for overall control of the best record in baseball. Mm -hmm. So with a little bit of a lead in their own division and over for number one overall, with definitely some wiggle room to make it to the wild card, are they making the right decision here? I say yes, and uh, I'll go into that why when we come back. Nobody does what Papa John's does. You choose. For just $10, get a large pizza with your choice of any two toppings. That's Papa John's quality for just $10. Or for just $2 more, get any large pizza, even specialties. Plus, earn free pizza fast with Papa Rewards when you order at PapaJohns.com. Get a large pizza with your choice of any two toppings for just $10. Or for just $2 more, get any large pizza. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. And we're back here on uh, Triple Threat Talk, and uh, before the break, I was about ready to give you my opinion about this Tommy John situation with Steven Strasburg, and why if it was a good thing or a bad thing, right move or wrong move. Right. I say yes, it was the right move, and here's why. The Nationals, yes, they are like four games away from the Reds for tie for the best record in baseball, but they are several games ahead of the Braves for the NL East, and they're miles ahead of the second and third place person in the wild card race for the NL. So even if they have some sort of a collapse or a a relapse, they're they're locked into playoffs, I think, regardless. Mm -hmm. So if the Braves somehow, because the Braves have been on a tear here lately. They've won a bunch of games. Yeah, that's what the Braves usually do. And and, uh, so even if the Braves get hot and the Nationals cool off and the Braves catch them and win the division, the Nationals are are still in the playoffs regardless, right. I think. Right. So I think this is a good move because you can bring, maybe bring up some of your young prospects because in September you can expand to the 40-man roster. Right. And you can bring up some young up-and-coming pitchers from the minor league mm-hmm. uh, farm system to kind of help alleviate not having Strasburg. And you can kind of do a patchwork starting for maybe his start. And then you'd still have your normal starters that you always have. Right. So I think it's a good decision because you have such a lead in the division and in the wild card, you're, you're not really risking a lot. You're not taking a chance of losing out on the playoffs here. 
Right. So, I mean, I agree with you. I mean, they got to protect their prospects. He's, he's one of the best pitchers they have. And this is probably the best the, pitcher. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, with this surgery, it's very dangerous. It's, it takes a lot out of you. You're out for a long time. But, you know, when you recover, you hopefully are better than you were before. So, I think to protect him, they should, you know, take him out for now and let him get healthy, let him get, you know, fit and let him get better. So, if they, play, if they don't take him out, he could, you know, not be needed, you know. The team needs him in the later. Right. You know, right now they're in a good position. Mm-hmm. You know, they have some, they have decent help right. to get where they need to go. So if they risk this, they could really lose him later. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. I, I think it is the right move to do. But I definitely think you sit him now and you're trying to make a deep playoff one without him because clearly they're winning games. He hasn't pitched 73 right. games. Right. So, no. yeah. so, I mean, he's... He's part of the reason they are where they are. He's a big reason, like Jason Verlander was with the Tigers last Justin year. Verlander. Justin Verlander, sorry. Justin Verlander was with the Tigers last right. year. But when they, when you look at this a little bit more, they definitely, when they make to the playoffs and they get second, third in the World Series, they definitely need right. to look at it because to deprive him of being such a big part of this team and getting them where they are, to deprive him of showing in the World Series would be just disrespectful, not right. only to them, but to right. their fans yeah, exactly. and to him as well. So I think you sit him now, and you go a little bit over the innings limit a little bit later on. He yeah. pitched 200 last year. His arm is definitely better probably this year. You could yeah. probably give him 200 more. Uh, you probably give him 200 again this year, which would be 40 more innings. Right. Well, you, don't, you don't want to uh, give him a case of a noodle arm. That would be good. That, that would be arm. Yeah, that's not good And with that, Big B has a tennis story that he posted earlier on Facebook. Okay. Um, this is not good at all. And there's going to be a blog on uh, TripleThroatTalk.com in the next couple days. Uh, posting two blogs. Actually, I forgot to mention uh, Darren wants to talk about the Seahawks. There's a blog actually on there. It's pending. It should be up by tomorrow. I'll let you know. And then this blog I'm going to talk about here in a minute should be up this week. Um, Rafael Nadal has withdrawn from his fourth straight tournament. He didn't make the Olympics, which I know was detrimental to him because he wanted to hold the flag for his country and play for his country. That didn't happen. Then he doesn't play in the tournament in, in Toronto, the next very next year with the Rogers Cup. And play that one. Then the tournament's going on right now in Cincinnati, a couple of hours from here. He's not playing that one either. So it's like, okay, maybe he's resting up. He's trying to you know, get over this knee injury, the tendonitis in his knee. He wants to be healthy for the U.S. Open. Not going to happen. The doll withdraws from the U.S. Open now. And, you know, obviously those ranking points are there. Also, you know, Murray can step up and maybe close the gap a little bit to being third. And, and, and you know, because the doll has those points to defend. If you make the U.S. Open, you have the points to defend. If you're not there, you don't make the points. Um, so, I mean, again, the question now poises, because I'm, I'm going to talk about this in the blog as well, but the question now goes to not only is this fourth straight tournament you know, without it, but this is not the first time he's had problems with his knees. This is not the first time. And, you know, a good interview today by Hannah Storm with Patrick Macron on ESPN, he was saying that like, Nadal's like a running back. He's like a, you know, he doesn't go out of bounds or whatever. He goes up the middle, like goes through the tackles, and that, his knees are messed up. That's how he plays. He doesn't know any other way to play. He plays, a, he plays a physical game, and that's the way he plays. No one else in the tour plays the way he does, and that's evident because the guy is so good and so fit. But, you know, if his knees are going to keep taking this damage, how much longer can he play? And I've already said before, he's, he's, I've, I've said numerous times he doesn't have a lot of time left. So it's an, I'm going to close it with this. I'm going to say, because you can read more on the blog, but it's a shame not to see him at the U.S. Open for the fans, uh, for the state of New York, for the fans of tennis. I mean, I don't know how much time the doll has left. I mean, I, the guy is a phenomenal athlete. There's no doubt about that. But the, his physical style, it, it might just end his career shortly, which is a shame. You still have Federer, Djokovic, and Murray. I know, but Nadal is one of the most popular players in the, on the and tour. And with Nadal out, maybe it'll open the door for Murray to really shine, which I've been looking for right, for but forever. It's, I like watching Nadal play. Nadal is a very exciting player, but it's a shame. It's his fourth tournament in a row, and it's a big tournament. It's a big, huge tournament. He hasn't missed the U.S. Open since 2003. Nine years. Record's come to an end. It's a shame. It's a shame it's to see that. It's a shame. Uh, with that, the big story of the day, Jonathan Vilma's case is at the crossroads and the ruling could be reached at any time. Judge Ginger Berrigan is the judge uh, presiding over the case. Uh, she had urged both sides, after she would heard arguments, she would urged both sides to settle, their own, uh, settle on their own. And she did explain that if she can legally, she is going to side with Jonathan Vilma on this. Uh, she said there is no doubt in her mind that... Uh, Roger Goodell might have overstepped his boundary, but due to the CBA and all the players signing it, she is not entirely sure she has the legal jurisdiction to do so. And even then, even then, 
The case would be appealed. Jim, uh, this uh, Judge Berrigan, which they are saying is she is a very liberal type style judge, uh, which is not a political, uh, not a political a segue because in judges you have conservative, neutral, and and liberal. It's not a party affiliation at all. It's just how she rules. She rules a little bit more freely. Is all that means in, in the legal because sense. Judge, judges on it aren't affiliated with any. Right, they're not affiliated with political parties, yes, anyways. At all. So, um, but uh, but yeah, just to clarify that it's right. not a political endorsement of any way. She, that's just right. how she rules. It's a right. little bit more freer yeah. than maybe. But she said that she would rule in favor of Jonathan Vilma mm -hmm. if she is able to, and all that would mean in this case would be that Velma would be free to return to the Saints during the preseason. While this deliberation is going on, there would most certainly be an appeal filed that day. Right. And also that this would go on through then, that he would be able to play like one or two games until the appeal was heard. At the point that the appeal is heard, he would no longer be allowed to play. Mm -hmm. But that is what they are going to do. Right. And my question to you is this. Should she be ruling in favor of Jonathan Vilma? I would say no. I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a tough situation as is anyway, but why, I mean, this whole bounty thing is just very, very confusing to everybody because who do you side with here? Obviously, the player is obviously at fault, but he doesn't think he is. But if Roger Goodell's trying to do a good job, and they think he's at fault. So it's like, who do you pick here? I'm going to say I do not think she should. And it's not, I've got nothing against the Saints. Yeah, I mean, a guy at work used to go back and forth because he's a Saints fan. But at heart, I like the team. I, I don't, like, respect their defense anymore. I, I but, don't care for anything they did. But, yeah. I mean, you know, Drew Brees has definitely got a hero sense about it. Yeah, yeah, I like Drew. There's I like a Drew. culture in that area. It's like Drew said, okay, guys, do this. He yeah. didn't do that. So. But, I mean, it's. It was Greg Williams, but we all know that. It's one of those things that. That I don't think she should quite rule in favor of Jonathan Bellman just because right. whatever reason she has. Because if she does that, and this is what Roger Goodell and the and the whole people, everybody that's involved with the league is afraid of. If she rules in favor of Jonathan Bellman, this is going to set a precedent, a very dangerous precedent, that what the commissioner says may not necessarily go. And what that would mean is... People could go out potentially, break the rules on purpose, get a yellow flag thrown on them in the game, right. cost them 15 yards, right. and no suspension laid down. Exactly. Right. This could very well be a very crushing, crushing precedent if she were to do this. She really needs to think about just because she wants to rule in favor of Jonathan Vilma, she needs to think this through because this precedent could be extremely dangerous. This is what the player signed up for. They signed up to allow... Uh, Roger Goodell to be the judge, the jury, and the executioner right, here. Right, right. Mm -hmm. She did not. Jonathan Vilma knew this when he signed. When they all signed the CBA, he knew this, and this is what he signed up for. And he still chooses chose to participate in this. So the fact of the matter is, she has no right, in my opinion, to rule like this, given the fact that we know the CBA. Now I'm not a judge, and she is, but certainly. She would even have to agree that this is a dangerous, dangerous precedent right. she would be setting. Exactly. Well, here's what we don't know. And that is, do we know that behind the closed doors in the Saints compound, was Greg Williams looking at Jonathan Vilma and saying, okay, Jonathan, we're going to do this Bounty Gate program, okay? This is what I want you to do. We're gonna give, I'm going to give you $10,000 to go out there and lay Brett Favre out, you know? This is what we're going to do. And... Uh, the question is, did they pose a question behind closed doors of this? And if you don't do it, we're going to release you. Or we're going to get rid of you. Right, you don't specific. So, so, do we know, was he forced to do this without her under his will? Did he agree to do this? I know most people would say, why are you even asking that? I'm sure he did it. On his, you don't know that for sure. Right. I mean... For somebody to be defending their character as much as he is, going to this length... Mm -hmm. Kind of makes me wonder: Was he forced to do this upon his own will? Yeah. Was he was he forced to 
say, if you don't do it, Jonathan, then we're going to release you from your contract. We're going to fire you from the Saints. Your services are no longer needed. I mean, what do you all think? Is that a possibility? Mm -hmm. I don't think that that's a possibility here because, you know, you're looking at a suspension, possibly without pay. I don't think that he would – because if the Saints dropping, there's about 31 other teams that would be willing to pick him up. So, I mean, including the 49ers, including the Seahawks. Need a good linebacker. Yeah, I mean, you'd be out of your mind not to take Jonathan Vilma. I don't think it was a situation where Greg Williams said, we're going to cut you if you don't agree to do this. I don't think that at all because he's a good linebacker when when it comes straight down to it. Yeah, exactly. And and as far as the other thing goes, uh, I don't think it's none of the court's business. Uh, I don't think it is. I think she's completely out of her jurisdiction. Uh, yeah. I, I think the players signed the deal. It would be like if us signed a contract and you wanted one thing and he wanted another and I wanted another. And we complained you know, and we, about it later. And we all agreed to it. And then later on, I said something and complained. And, and then you all could just be like, well, you agreed to it. Yeah, this exactly. is the terms we agree. This exactly. is the contract. So, uh, I mean... It, it, it is an interesting story. It's like a sense to the hourglass type story. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know. It seems like it's never ending. I mean, uh, all we've talked about is this bounty gate thing. I'll just be glad when it's over, it's done. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's annoying, to say the least. It's, it's, well, with all that said, that is headlines for the week, guys. I have two quick, just real brief okay. headlines. One uh, baseball story: Milky Cabrera, the San Francisco 49ers, suspended 50 yeah, games for San Francisco Giants. What did I say? 49ers. San Francisco Giants. Sorry, that's a, <laughs> that's a positive for testosterone at 15 games, so he's done for the season for the Giants. And also, football special is coming up very soon. Football starts in about less than three weeks, so we'll keep you posted on when that's going to happen. This guy will be wearing his New Jersey and be gloating the whole time. I guarantee it. And so, I'll be wearing my New Jersey and my new hat, but I will not be gloating. You'll be. And, and I will be wearing my hat since it's a football special. Okay. And and if you go to uh, www.espn.com slash fantasy football, I have set up the league. We just need competitive. Yeah, we, we just need, need competitive. Now, we, need, we need from you the fan. Who's in and who's out? So, I'll tell the- you now. First come, first serve right. basis. That's the only fair way to do and it. We are running a team, se- or, and, or like together, not separately. Together, together. Yeah. we're one team. One team. We're one team. This is a eight team league. So the, the first, first seven, seven viewers that log on there go to the private league triple threat talk password triple threat talk. Sign up, make your team. Once all eight of you have signed in, we will we will uh, pick an evening where we can get together for a couple hours and do the snake draft right. online. Right. The draft order will be done at random. We're going to let the computer decide the randomization right. mm-hmm. of who goes first. That way, there's no you all can't say well you guys are the host and you got to pick first. Right. You know right. we don't want none of that. So when we come back. We'll get into OVW Wrestling and WWE and SummerSlam Pick'ems right after this. Hey, Nick Dinsmore here. Do you have the dream of becoming a pro wrestler? Well, I did, and I came to Ohio Valley Wrestling. Join the Nick Dinsmore Pro Wrestling class today. I'm a former WWE superstar. I'm a former nine-time Ohio Valley Wrestling heavyweight champion, and I can train you to be the best today. For all the information regarding the Nick Dinsmore Pro Wrestling class, Go to ovwrestling.com and click on school. Join the Nick Densmore Pro Wrestling class today. ovwrestling.com, click on school. Okay. So just so you know, right. so go in there and check on that. Oh, we're back. We're back. We're, 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 we're talking about fantasy football. We were talking about the fantasy football league. You kind of got. We, we were. I was telling him where to find everything because. Even though I run the league, he has to run the email and the other technical part of things to keep me informed. But the um, the you, thing I did want to stress after before we get into wrestling, if you want, if demand is so strong, uh, we are going to then break away. We're still going to have our league, but you will then have a choice to compete against me, Big B, or Postmaster in one of our individual leagues. Uh, we will have. Three additional leagues, if if need be. if right. need be. As of right now, it is just the one, the one league and the one team. If we get like fifteen or twenty of you guys wanting to do it, then yes, we will. If if you guys get in there and see, oh hey crap, this thing is rolled right. up, right? And you tell us on the show after it's filled up. Of course, we'll know too. Uh, we'll probably set up another couple of leagues. And uh, if if you are successful in defeating the team. 
if we do not win the league, if anybody else wins the league, we got a pretty nice prize headed your way. We haven't decided exactly what. We've been mulling over some things. But uh, the winning team or the owner of that team will receive a nice Take prize. Take it to the Super Bowl. The no. winner of the league, not everybody that beats us. Right. No, <laughs> the winner. Because we finished eighth. Oh, God. We're not working out seven prize packs for seven feet. Forget about it. Forget about it. But with that being said, I think we're going to rip uh, rip Shiloh Jones' interview with Terry Bodie yeah, for our uh, weekly uh, The fan advocate, Terry Bodie, uh, sits down with uh, one Mr. Shiloh Jones, former tag team partner of Johnny Spade and OMG. And Shiloh's kind of not really being happy. He's with Ruta Rolamar, they're a tag team. Everyone knows the wild cards. And hey! What? Stole our line! <laughs> <laughs> But getting back to Shaw is very displeased with certain things. He thinks he's not getting his shot, and he expresses it to Terry in this interview. Yeah. Fans, welcome to this week's edition of After the Bell. I'm your host, the fan advocate, Terry Bodie. And with me this week is a guest who is just as controversial as anybody who ever has been here in Ohio Valley Wrestling. A man who we're still trying to understand what it is they're trying to prove. With me, my guest... Shiloh Jones. Mr. Jones, thank you for being on the show today. The pleasure is all yours, I assure you. Well, with that being said, I'm just going to come straight to the point. You're out here with your partner, Ruto Raul Amada. Have you, in essence, turned your back on Ohio Valley Wrestling and Danny Davis? We're trying to understand what it is you're trying to prove. You're asking me if I turned my back? On Danny Davis? On OVW? That's what you're asking me? Yes, sir. Let me ask you something. Did, did you not see, like me and Raul saw, Danny Davis gloss over the fact, gloss over the fact of everything we've done and not pick us in the, for the Joe VW when that whole crap was going on? Well, to be fair, you have gotten plenty of opportunities here. You've been here at Ohio Valley Wrestling for four years. Nobody's ever going to take away your accomplishments and what you have done for Ohio Valley Wrestling. That's what the fans are trying to understand, what it is that you're, what it is that you're complaining about. Let me ask you something. If, all, if everything you said is true and, everybody, and we get that kind of respect, then why is it we can't even dress in the locker room with or my so-called colleagues? Why is it when an opportunity comes around, Danny Davis picks somebody else? I've been here for four years. I have earned the right to a little respect. And, you, and, with, and you've gotten those opportunities. You're a multiple-time Ohio Valley Wrestling Southern Tag Team Champion. You headlined. You have fought, for the, you have fought and headlined a Saturday Night Special here at the Davis Arena. So I'm, what is and it that you're moment, trying to understand? I mean, the, I, the moment I got a little bit of something, the moment I got that little bit of spotlight, what happens? The rug is pulled right out from underneath me. And at least I got that. Rudo Ra Raul Lama Lamada hasn't even had that much. Rudo Raul Lamada has been here the same as you and has gotten the same opportunities, has had time to headline main events all over at different live events. To me and to the fans, with all due respect, it sounds like you're complaining, and that's what's, un that's what's uncharacteristic of Shiloh Jones. What is it that you're wanting? Terry, I think you have the same problem that Danny Davis has. What problem that these is that? fans have. That you don't see what's right in front of your eyes. Me and Lamada, we have something to prove. And if you guys aren't going to get it... What is it that you're trying to prove? Then we're just going to have to show you. Show us what? I mean, obviously, Shiloh's not happy. No. What are you talking about that? All right, Scooby. Look <laughs> like Scooby Doo over there. All right, but yeah, I mean, Shiloh's obviously good stuff by Terry. Uh, thank you for letting us use it. He's airing his grievances and he has some issues. But I mean, he's. I think he's kind of whining. I mean, he's JTG. All over just like it. Cliff Compton. I want respect. I want respect. But he got respect tonight. That's for sure. Yeah, he did. But uh, that was quite interesting. But as always, we urge you to go to TripleThreatTalk.com, TheFanAdvocate.com. Check out the stuff that Terry puts out. In addition to the OBW coverage that you're going to find right here, right now. Uh, well, also of wrestling.com. You can always check out my channel 138 WKY. So, or Blitz so, TV. 
this week on the show, obviously controversy surrounded the OVW Heavyweight Championship with Johnny Spade and Jamie Lovencia, where one person thought one won and one person thought the other one won. So Gilbert interviewed Trent Parker about the controversy, and you know, obviously Spain and El Vensi were saying, yeah, I won, and, and Sharp was the original referee, but Barker came out, and, and ipso facto, you know, Jamin thought he won, but, you know, in reality, obviously, he didn't. So, Trash announced later that night that Spade would take on El Vensi in a rematch with their SNS match. That was the main event of the evening. So, this is a big a big announcement by Dean Hill. Dean Hill answered the next Saturday Night Special in September, which we're going to give our raffle that we've been doing. Um, this is our Saturday Night Special. There'll be a Nightmare Battle Royal. And the winner will receive a title shot at the October Saturday Night Special. Everyone's that huge battle royal, whoever's in it, uh, they're going to get a golden opportunity at the OVW title at the October Saturday Night Special. So, also, Moose and Hayes will face the best team, team ever, ever for the title shot in the September. It's a Rocky and Bullwinkle mm-hmm. and a title so, shot. So, I, I think it's good about OVW that they're already starting to build the Saturday Night Special already. So yeah, consi- considering uh, the Saturday Night Special, the first will be the 10th anniversary of David Serena, which is a very awesome accomplishment. In the last two Saturday Night Specials, they didn't start announcing matches till like the Right, week so now they're, they're starting to build it up more, which I like. So, uh, Shala and Lamana came out to rough up Dean Hill. Before they could do that, thank goodness Moose and Hayes came to the save. Uh, and, you know, before Shell could, and Raw could make Dean Hill, you know, extinct for a little while. Uh, so, Moose and Hayes actually put in the number one contender spot against Shell and Raul. Uh, Shut him up. Yeah, right. But uh, Moose and Hayes did win via disqualification. The best team ever assaulted Moose and Hayes during the match. So, I guess I guess the best team wants to face Moose and Hayes for the titles prove they are the best team ever. So, the TV titles on the line. Skin Mark! I didn't wow. Get, I didn't get team yet. The TV champion, Tony Gunn, as you know, you're the right. bear, uh, defended his title against the rock star from the s- rocket from the Sunset Strip, Ryan Howe. Again, Skidmark! Against the big, the Welch Colossus. No, rock no, rock. no, no, no. What? It's not how it's said. Okay. Say it properly, sir. The Welch Colossus. There you Rob go. Rob Terry. Go. Yeah, there you go. And before the match got underway, Trevor Bartrax said, Josh, why don't you take a little break? I'm going to be the referee. Wow. So. TPT. So Ryan Howe rolled up. Ryan Howe rolled up Tony Gunn for the win. Rob Terry was on the outside, and Ryan Howe became new TV champion. That's not fair. So Rob Terry should be very peeved about that because he was kind of just thrown outside while Ryan picked up the quick three. Hey, he was thrown out fair and square. No, he wasn't. Sure. Well, anyway, so Ryan Howe's your new TV champion. Look how far we've come from there. Yep. So Eddie Diamond. Jobber. You're saying who? Jobber. Eddie Diamond. Jobber. He took our newly signed TAM Impact Star. Alex Silva. Jobber. Who? Alex <laughs> Silva. Who's that? Alex Silva. I never yeah, heard of that guy. Yeah, he's pretty great again. Really? So Alex Silva picked up the win, but I did like the fact that uh, they are starting to showcase this guy, Eddie Diamond, with his manager. I wish, he's a very hilarious guy. Um, really? I like that. He's really? You, you want to be like that guy. Don't lie. You want to oh, be like that I would not be like him. No, you want to be in his position. No, I want to be in his the position. The doctor would not wear a bow tie. The doctor would certainly not I'm wear saying, a bow tie. I'm just saying he wants the to be doctor like, would not The doctor would if, if the doctor was this guy's manager, was Eddie Diamond's manager, he would already be having well, the World Heavyweight I'm just saying, he in... Nah, 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 case in point, what? is he wants to be in his position. I'm so the I'm best saying. manager money can buy. Why don't you tell Trash that? Sure, sure. Right? Tell Trash. All right, so I did like the, I did like Eddie Diamond getting this, you know, fair shake against Alex. So no, Alex of a need him right in the face. So in the main event, Johnny Spade defended his <laughs> WWE Heavyweight Championship. Heavyweight <laughs> <laughs> Championship against Jamin Olavency in another in a rematch of their very good classic Saturday Night Special. Um, so you were there for that, obviously. It was I very, was. It was a very good match, and they had another good match tonight. As he throws the skittles away. I'll throw them on the ground. Come on. Anyway, so Three another hours. classic t- match. TV time ran out, and if you were there live, they did announce the time ran out and the spirit and the spirit was winning. But if you watched it at home, the match just ended. We just went to black. So for those of you who didn't see it, the match they did come out and say the TV time is ended. So Spade wins the title because of TV time right now. And that was it. Quite was, the food. It was a draw. So very good stuff from them as always. So that was very interesting. Uh, check it out this Saturday at channel 138 WKYI at one o'clock and nine o'clock. Also, you can go to blip.tv on Thursday and check it out as well. Very good stuff this week. Uh, I'm not gonna say who, but a teenage star makes his trip down to Ohio Valley Wrestling and has a debut. Debut. Uh, there's a very good tag, a very good main event tag title match to determine a number one. We have a Finn Fatale match. Yes, right. So very good stuff from OVW as always. It's definitely heating up, and I'm looking forward to the Sunday special in September. So, W W E coverage. E coverage. Right, so. so you got some fail down notes I here. Did, why why would you even waste the ink on a no, printer I, for SmackDown? I, I have two two reasons for this. One, uh, I'm, the only reason I'm putting this down is for obviously reasons. But 
Jinder Mahal, this is what you're saying. Why are you putting this down? Whatever. Again, Jinder Mahal. I think, I think he's starting to crush on Gender. Like, I know. Cody's going to get jealous. Oh my God. Cody, Cody is going to be the very The reason I'm saying is because they're, they're kind of doing some kind of feud with Ryback and Jinder Mahal. They're kind of going back and forth with that, and they kind of take place this week where Jinder Mahal defeats two little classes. So he's kind of saying, I can hang with you too, because if we remember, Ryback didn't necessarily beat him the way he usually beats people by slamming him to the mat and, and annihilating him by like a pinfall or whatever. Usually we won by count on disqualification. So. I think they're trying to keep this thing with Jinder Mahal with Ryback a little bit. We'll see where it goes. But, I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, Ryback obviously is undefeated. Uh, and Jinder Mahal, you know, he's facing before and he hasn't lost. So we'll see where this thing goes. I'm actually interested to see what they do with this thing because Ryback hasn't dominated him yet. So, obviously the big story this week with the primetime players losing AW, uh, they actually defeat Primo and Epico for the number one contender spot and they have the title match at SummerSlam, which I do not care for. I would actually have preferred all teams get involved, all three of them. Now it's just Primo and Abacor are alienated, which they have some wins over the Prime Time part, so I think they should deserve a shot too. I mean, what do you guys think about that? I, like I said, I think they just need to tear down the whole thing and rebuild it. I mean, I, I, I do think that they, I think Primo deserve a shot, but they're not, so. so I, and another question I posted, do you see Prime Time players getting another manager? No. No. There's no one else. I mean, do you see, well, I'm saying, if you could think of somebody, who would they pick? Ah. Uh, Someone that could, you know, lead them. I don't think... As a voice. I don't think so. Nobody? No. I no. can't believe that maybe Eve Torres to cancel out Eve Mendez, but that's Rosa it. Mendes. Eve Mendez. Eve Mendez. Eve Mendez. Uh, to cancel out Rosa Mendez, if she, especially if she doesn't get the uh, SmackDown starting nod to right. Booker T. But. Right, right. So, uh, then moving on to Monday Night Raw. You're probably, why, you're probably saying, why is this on there? Well, apparently, if you complain and whine enough, you're going to get a match. Unfortunately, that's just right back. JTG, we all know what happened. He complained on Twitter about how he wasn't, uh, he was not get. pretty much what happened is he didn't get his bonus check that he wanted from WWE WrestleMania. They didn't get enough money to pay for their time down there. That's what he was kind of peeved about. And he thought that he was going to get some kind of push after that. Peeved. Um, so, but right back, did, right, JTG did get his match. Unfortunately, it was with right back. Right back demolished him, obviously. Um, Feed me more. And the fans are starting to chant that. So people are starting to get behind right back, which I like that. Which I don't like. I do. So another Raw active thing. This Raw active thing started to pick up most of are actually doing things with it. Uh, the WWE Universe was able to pick a guest on Piper's Pit, and the fans chose Chris Jericho. But they all ended up showing up anyway. Yeah, so. Yeah. But I do like seeing Piper in the ring. I do like seeing Piper interact with Jericho. Jericho was actually ecstatic to be there. He's never been on Piper's Pit before, so he actually enjoyed that, and then everyone got involved anyway. So, uh, Damian Sandow defeated Christian, and the reason I bring this up, and I mentioned this to you, last week on this show, I was very upset with Alex Wright defeating Dolph Ziggler. And you said, it's a storyline. Like, what happened? Jericho distracted Ziggler, and Riley picked up the win and rolled him up. But this week, Dan Sandow fought Christian, and the same exact thing happened. Uh, Sandow got distracted by Brodus Clay. Christian rolled him up, but Sandow kicked out, and then Sandow was able to win the match. So what do you think happened there? Well, why, did, why did Riley beat Ziggler, but why did Sandow not lose to Christian? I didn't understand what he just asked. What did you understand? What did you understand? Well, I mean, you're kind of like, he's like thinking you don't understand it. either. Well, I, I understand, but what, what he what he asked said is this: last week he was complaining that um, Alex Riley defeated Dolph Ziggler because of distraction by Jericho. This week, uh, Damian Sandow fought Christian. Brodus Clay came out to distract Damian Sandow. It worked, but he still beat Christian. Right. So. Yeah. So, I mean, they're uh, clearly going to have a match some point down the line. I'm no but. kidding, Sherlock, but I'm saying, why did Sandow win but Ziggler lose? Because I, I told you, they're pushing Jericho. Jericho's going to win the match on Sunday. Yeah. They're pushing Jericho. That is why. It makes it better. I think the Just because they do it for one doesn't mean they're going to do it for the side, other. I think the bigger picture here is I think they're pushing Sandow, too, to beat Brodus Clay also. I think they're really pushing well, Sandow as well. If, uh, that was more evident when he got pedigree and destroyed by DX in thousand episodes. Could be. So. Could be. He's the intellectual so then, of the match. So before we close for break, we're going to end, up, end Raw about the big thing. Uh, Brock Lesnar, Shawn Michaels, and Triple H stuff. Uh, Triple H Doctor said. <laughs> Triple H wasn't there a little bit, so Sean Lundstein had to face Brock Lesnar on his own. And uh, yeah, nothing really happened in the beginning. Uh, we thought something was going to like, come on, let's see some physical altercations here. Nothing really happened. So then Sean Lundstein was about to leave, and Matt Shrek was interviewing the big show. And then he's like, wait, wait, hold on, you're not important right now. I gotta go see what's going on. So Shawn Michaels was having an interaction with Paul Heyman, and they were like, kind of, you know, like this with the cars. And then Lesnar pulls out Michaels out of the car, and then he hits the camera, and the camera goes coward. Down. It's the, the camera goes black, and then they come back, the window is smashed, Triple H's like, what happened to Shawn Michaels, whatever? Then they come back, in the ring, Lesnar, F5, Shawn Michaels, and he's got him in the Kimura, about to break his arm, and Plyman's like, if you come one step closer, I'm going to break it, and then 
He broke it. Break it, Pepe Le Pew. He but, did. And they were saying on Twitter this morning that they're not sure if it really is. Bro. So we'll see what happens. It will Michaels be at SummerSlam? We don't know. Uh, according to WWE, he said he's not. So. But I guarantee you. I, mean, I was like, sh- I like, I do like this because it makes it a few more personable. And it gives Sean, you know, like he's retired, but he's still in right. the eye. And I, I think this makes the match more looking forward to me. One more I, match. No. One more no. match. No. One I don't want more. I don't want I love the kid. I love the guy, but, but I don't I like want Michael as much as he does, but no, sorry. Yeah. So that was Monday Night Raw. And when we come back, SummerSlam Pickums. Remember what is on the line. You're going up against us. Whoever does better out of all of us, well, not us, but whoever does better out of you viewers, you will win a signed Mike Mondo picture and a signed Dolph Ziggler picture. Who wants it more? Your picks coming up. Would you like autograph? I do way more for the fans. I doubt that very much. Do you like this hat? Here, it's yours. You can have it. <laughs> Take one of my helmets. It's much better than a hat. What about a ride home? Can I give you a ride home? I mean, even better. Take my car. Do whatever you want with it. Kidding me? Can you beat that? I don't think so. True champions know what fans really want. Mobile One, the official motor oil of NASCAR. Many champions, many fans. One oil, Mobile One. And welcome back to the final segment of Triple Threat Talk. We're about ready to get into our SummerSlam Pick'ems. Pick'ems. Pick'ems, Pick'ems, Pick'ems. Like I said, you guys make your picks as well. And whoever does the best gets a signed Mike Mondo photo and a signed Dolph Ziggler photo. So it's up to you how you pick. Here we go. Here we so, go. So, this counts as well because these are still pick The YouTube slash Facebook slash WWE.com and it's MySpace. It's a Raw Empire MySpace.com free show. Santino Morales defends his United States title against Antonio Cesaro. Claudio Castagnoli? Yes. I think Cesaro takes it. Uh... I think Cesaro is just about there, but he's not there quite yet. I still say Santino retains, retains the title. Because of something you told me earlier, I picked Santino. Now we get into the actual live show, the card. The WWE Tag Team Championships are on the line. R Truth and Kobe Kingston play with Little Jimmy at their side. Hey, Take yeah. on the primetime players minus AW. Uh, I'm going to say R Truth and Kobe retain. I think if this situation with AW didn't occur, I think we might see new tag team champions in the primetime players, but like you were always taught in school, if one person does something bad, you're all affected for it, so I think Truth and Kings are retaining the titles because of AW's comment. So. The truth shall set you free. Our Truth and Kofi retain, so both those titles stay with their rightful. Okay. And move on to the Intercontinental Championship. The Marine himself, The Miz, the Wiz, takes on Mr. Mr. Question Mark because he's wearing question marks every week for Mysterio. I'm gonna go with the Miz. This is the toughest one because it's a big Why? Because it's a big pay per view. But it's, it was just thrown together at the last minute. Well I'm saying it's a twenty it's, it's a twenty fifth anniversary of summer, so it's a big huge event. Um uh, Rimish is one of the biggest stars. Um the Miz won the title in a thousand episodes, so he's he's had a title for a little bit. Um I'm actually going with Mysterio. I think he wins on the big stage this time. I think Mysterio wins the title. I go with the Miz. Not a couple of matches that I don't have any title meaning, they're just there. Uh, Kane versus Daniel Bryan with possible Charlie Sheen interaction. We have no idea. Which would be epic. So. I'm going to go with Kane on this. I say if... This is tough because you don't know if he's going to be there or not. If Charlie Sheen was there, I'd probably go with Dan- with Kane because he probably... Be, be, he might be there. He might show up. He might show up. He might cost Daniel Bryan the match. But I'm... I'm it's tough to pick because Charlie Sheen's not there. But I'm probably going to go with Kane because I, I do see Charlie Sheen getting there and calling Daniel Bryan to lose. So. Kane... For the victory. No, no, no. Chris Jericho versus Dolph. Uh, this match is going to be very, very good. Two of the best wrestlers this in the This will be the shell stealer. Yeah, the absolutely. Jericho is Jericho's one of the best. And Ziggler is right up there. Um, this match is very important because it shows how they're going to build Dolph Ziggler the rest of the year. Um, because he's the money in the bank person. Could he cash in on SummerSlam? He quite possibly could. Del Rio did it last year. Uh, Dolph Ziggler did it this year. But this match has a lot of precedent for Dolph Ziggler. Um, if he beats Jericho on the big stage, he proves his point where Jericho won the big one. But if Jericho wins, obviously he proves his point that he can win the big one. So I'm going to pick Dolph Ziggler win this one. I think they're going to put Dolph Ziggler over in this, in this situation. I'm saying Jericho. I think Jericho. I mean, it's all, all signs are pointing to Jericho winning this match. Uh, he's going away for a couple weeks. Maybe that's the way to send him away. And that's, uh, send him away with a victory. Send him out on a high note. Okay, I think this next one we're all going to agree on. So, CM Punk defends his WWE Championship against John Cena and the Big Slow. Or Bane. Right. Um, ben 10 wins it. Ben 10. 
I don't pick the big. I don't see the big show winning the title. I don't see what purpose it makes for him to have the title right you now. Mind? Um, it's tough to pick between John Cena and CM Punk because this has precedent going forward towards the Royal Rumble. Who's going to face the Rock? Because the Rumble's not that far away. Um, right now, I'm going to stick with Punk right now, but I think Cena gets it back down the line. But I'm going to pick Punk for the time being. You said something that kind of made a light go off in my head, and that is you said it's the 25th anniversary of SummerSlam. Right. So it's a big show mm -hmm. for WWE. Mm -hmm. Not to be confused with picking the big show, because I'm not. Right. <laughs> but the reason why I say that is expect the unexpected, and although more than likely Punk will face the Rock and Royal Rumble, I think we have a new champ here, and I think John Cena okay. wins the match. All right. So... What it looks like is going to be the main event. Again, the title match is not the main event to your, dis to your disdain. Wait a minute. we got another title match. Oh, that's right. My mistake. Uh, apparently. Apparently. We're going to say that we have this. If it changes again, we won't count this again. Just don't count. But right now, it looks like Sheamus is going to defend his uh, World Heavyweight Championship against Alberto Del Rio. A um, mystery opponent. Right. Um... I go with Sheamus. I don't see him losing any time soon. I'm going to go with Sheamus regardless of who he faces. I go with Sheamus. Right, so again, Sheamus. Unless it's Wade Barrett, then I'm going to choose Wade Barrett. Duh. Yeah. Anyway, so, again, like I said, it's your, dis your dis disdain. Uh, Triple H versus Brock Lesnar for the main event. Off the title. Well, uh, we don't know that yet. It's yes, it'll more be, like dude, it's the main event. Maybe. It's we don't the main event. Anyway, so. It's Triple H, for God's sakes. Brock Lesnar came back to all this money, and he first loses his match against John Cena in a reverse squash match, as you like to call it. And he comes back and has his feud with Triple H. I think Triple H wins. I don't see Brock Lesnar beating Triple H this summer. I don't see him bringing back Brock Lesnar for losing. I do want Triple H to win, don't get me wrong, right. but just because I don't see Brock Lesnar coming back, wasting his time, wasting everyone's time to come back and lose two matches back to back. Right. For that purpose and that purpose alone, I'm saying Brock Lesnar. Right. Had he beat John Cena, I want to say, want to make it perfectly clear, I would be choosing Triple H right now. Okay. But I don't think Brock Lesnar is going to lose back to back okay. matches. Overpaid jobber. That's Brock Lesnar. That's his role. That's what he's doing. No, your role, know it. And that's what he's going to do. And Triple H. Wins right. at SummerSlam. Another match that's not confirmed, but it might happen. This doesn't count. Sandow might face Brodus Clay, which they look like a villain towards. But that's not, that's not doesn't count towards pickup. So. so there you go. You got eight matches, I believe, to choose uh, from. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yep, eight. So uh, for the winner, winner, chicken dinner, we'll uh, win the signed Mondo and signed off super photo. So uh, good stuff there. Uh, guys, uh, any wild card to talk of this week? I got no wild card. Um, I don't really. Well, all right. Uh, I'm just because I'm going to talk about it on my blog. My next blog, spoiler alert, is going to be the 2005 draft uh, for another, the NFL. Another riveting doc spot, I'm sure. Uh, another riveting doc spot. Hey, they're going over great, FYI. But uh, the hat is an emo hair. It's both. Oh, okay. Uh, combined, they are hat hair. Oh. But uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the 2005 NFL draft. I'm not going to really say what I'm going to talk about, but I'm going to talk about that, so just a little spoiler alert for my wild card. Spoiler alert. Wild spoiler card alert. alert fail? No, but I do have an idiot of the uh, week. Who's that? Chad Johnson. There we go. <laughs> for all these reasons. I know we talked about it earlier, so we don't need to go into detail, no. but uh, spousal abuse is unacceptable, and over sure. the line, and makes you a complete idiot. Just so. walk away. So Chad Johnson... It's, first of all, stupid to get in a fight over a condom receipt in a first place. And second of all, just plain dumb. So this week, Chad Johnson, you are episode 62, Triple Threat Talk, Idiot of the Week. And thank you for tuning in. As always, though, before we sign off, I want to say uh, thank you or to OBW for everything they do for us each and every week. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, yeah. Terry. Yeah. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, check out thefanadvocate.com, also triplethreattalk.com, which will link you to the Fan Advocate page. Check out our weekly blogs, My Doc Spots, and their uh, seemingly NASCAR and Peyton Manning centered blogs, as well as the Olympics and the I Seahawks. I make three blogs. Blog. Two's about NASCAR, <laughs> one is about Peyton Manning. The blogs will be different, fail. <laughs> But uh, discovering the guy who wrote a blog about the Reds in the Olympics. Hey, st still, hey, different blogs and they're mine are different. Okay, different, different, different. strokes for different folks. That's right. right. But, but they're I, regardless, though, uh, very good blogs. I'm kidding him, of course. Very good blogs. Uh, 
Um, Brandon's uh, Olympiad blog was Olympiad. also very good. Um, but yeah, check it out. Check out our shows. Uh, comment. Sign up for the league. Um, yep. Anything else? That's it. I think that's it. Before I close the show, I do want to say a special thanks to Frank Miller and Terry Bodie. Uh, we know what they did for us, and we cannot thank them enough. That was very honorable of you guys. We can we can send a thousand thank yous, and it wouldn't even be enough. So that was really awesome of you. Yeah, we appreciate what you did very much. Absolutely. We, we, so. Uh, if you want to like us on Facebook, please do at facebook.com slash triple threat talk. You can follow us on Twitter at triple threat talk. And you can send us any comment or question you have at triple threat talk at yahoo.com. And also, of course, visit our lovely website, triple threat talk.com. So, triple threat talk, this is Big B. This is the doctor. And Johnny Spade, if you're watching, last name isn't Jones. Just one, just so you know. This is Postmaster Jones. This is Big B signing off for the I wish Doctor would take that stupid hat off. Good night, everybody.